Um, when he was little, when he was very young, he was a sweet little quiet thing. He was very quiet, a bit introverted. Um, shy, a bit shy till he was about five. Then he started to come out of his shell a bit, but he was always very quiet. And we used to go for earlies here at DY when we were that young, that we'd walk down the middle of the road in the dark because we both were that young and still sort of believe in monsters that would come out of the, the side of the road. So I'm thinking that if you're in the middle of the road, we'd be safe. Like. <laughs> and he just wanted to be the best. He just wanted to surf and be the best. Wanted to be the world champion. So he said that at 14, I'm going to be a world champ one day. He had, he had the ability. I, I see him do manoeuvres in 89, guys still haven't done now. A few guys made fun of him when he first got sponsored and he went within himself, which was a very weird thing to do. I would say Shane's being shy about things like a bit introverted, lacking in a bit of maybe self-confidence. Okay in the water, but out of the water maybe didn't feel he could cope with it all. I guess the first time I heard mention of Shane was when my business partner at the time came to me and said, oh, there's this young guy. And I'd heard that before. It's something, you, you know, if you've been shaping for a long time, you'll hear mention of new hot surfers. But um, he had a, my business partner had a tone of voice that was a little bit different. I just saw that there was a, a gruntiness mixed in with a, a kind of a, a mad side as well. So he had a, a crazy little head flip kind of turn that, Reminded me a tiny bit of Oki in the sense that Oki could do these little look backs and get very expressive. So he thought, well that's good, there's a looseness of, of not giving a fuck what your style looks like. And yet this incredible focus with his pump. I mean, perfect centre of gravity didn't hurt. I know, I know, I know Slater worked on a lower centre of gravity when, when he came across Shane. I don't know if you call it a... It wasn't a new line, those lines had been drawn, but he was just doing them so amazingly. And no, no, no double turning to get to the lip, like one line, come out of that one line again. No wiggling at, at all, like pure, trying to just pure surf, like. I think if I look at um, and, and compare Shane's style to, or approach to all the other guys that have ever made boards for, it was probably the most honest style that I'd seen. It was really um, exactly the way his personality was. It was raw, pure fucking raw, uh, you know, natural style. Yeah, I, I guess I compared him to other guys that I'd made boards for. I mean, a very small number of boards for someone like Joe Ingle, that helped hugely because he would go wailing into a cutback in the same way as what um, Shane did. The coke win was good. The win was good. It was what followed after the win that he didn't handle. He didn't have the psych to handle it. He just didn't needed a, a Kelly Slater psych. That's what he needed to handle the media and everything after that. No matter what he was doing in life, I think he was going to head the way he, he headed me, bro. Because the first first time I basically met Slater, one of the first things Slater has said to me is, "Your brother's an alcoholic." I think there is a a definite link between the um, eccentricity slash insanity and the approach to the wave. What do they say, that the, the brightest flame burns the quickest or whatever. And that intensity, like, to get that good is maybe, uh, it's very, that's very hard to sustain. What were the main attributes do you think that kind of affected your just kind of keeping going on that trajectory? Maybe lack of self-confidence. Maybe drinking too much, partying too much, having too much fun, as we talked about. Just having too much fun and too much money. That's all you can put it down to. Um, too much money to spend, too much wanting to be nice to his friends and spend money on his friends and go out, and then it just became a vicious circle. It's like everyone else became fuckwits and annoyances and another person you know wanting to take something so um, yeah his sensitive foundation is definitely a, was a driving force and his undoing it took three years you know it, it basically took three years to reach the top I never did I, obviously I didn't win a world title but 
you know, it just only it took three years to get to the top, and it took three years to get to the bottom. <laughs> and then the next time I saw him was with the same kind of like it was like that was one key moment where I saw a shift, a bad shift. And then in Hawaii, I don't think it kind of it couldn't have been much later when I saw him walking towards me, or someone walking towards me along sunset. And I went, oh, looked a little bit like a drunk. He was just shuffling through the sand. Just some smash dude has a massive night and he got closer and closer and went, that's my number one team rider. <laughs> what have you done all night? He was annihilated. He'd been up doing whatever and I just felt sorry. Just went, oh, it's not going to be easy. He's just going to disappear. Do you have regrets? No. No, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, if you're born in Australia, you've won the lottery. Pretty much. You know, and I'm, I still get by. I don't have regrets. I actually have good good memories. Yeah, the, um, the experience of making those boards for Shane, the banana boards, as, as a request of his, already put quite a bit of um, feeling into the moment when I watched him ride it. And so when we did arrive at South Ave and the board is just resting on the ground looking weird, that was already a trip. But then to give it to someone who's hugely inspired, who inspired me to make the thing and then watch him in perfect four to five foot waves that were just the right kind of bowly shape to actually unleash the thing. That, yeah, I, how could there be anything better? I don't think I've ever seen a board utilised and exploited and put on rail to such a degree. So there's certain waves that they were going to be really good for, almost like stationary waves I suppose, <laughs> very sucky waves, but not for e all round. It was just disappointing that I had to get off the banana boards and start getting back into my flow again, you know, and I said so I went back to the V-bottom and I said to Greg, you can show me some nice V-bottoms, and he did, they got bloody stolen in France, so I went, yeah. I was spewed. I was sprayed lovely by whatever his name was and I got stolen in France. First night I got to France, I got bloody stolen. Uh, maybe a little bit silly, in not, in, in not fully working out your equipment, thinking you can just jump to one whole different side of thing. I mean, that we, different boards for different waves, like, yeah. The baked beans, mate, the baked beans were unreal. They were round noses. I said, oh, well, let's just, we don't need these extra 10 inches in the nose. You just go to the baked beans. We call them baked beans. And they were round noses. They were about five eight, five ten, if that, five eights. And they were just, and they were flat and they were V bottoms. And they were it was bizarre. We went from this curvy thing with concave to a round nose V bottom. It got to the point where Shame was gonna do what Shame was gonna do. Um, no one even to this day can can point him in a different direction. And it, just, it just so happened to be that he was in the top 10 of the world at the time when he was choosing to basically stuff it all up. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't want it anymore. So if you don't want it, that's it. It's, um, it's all changed. You've got skinny fellas doing aerials instead of big legs doing turns. And it's like, well, Okay, where are we going to go? Are we going to go back to that or are we going to stay with this? What's going to pay? That peak came along and yeah, he, he surfed incredible. Uh, and, and then the, you know, the, the fame and the money came towards the end of it, which is quite bizarre. I, I suppose he could have done, if he could have struggled along for another 10 years and tried to be sober and quite possibly never surfed as good as what he already had. I'm pretty similar, I don't think he can have just a couple of beers. Like, so he, I, I think he's pretty much, any redemption, he'll have to stop drinking. Because, uh, yeah, and, and start surfing, he might find a bit of happiness. Yeah, he doesn't um, dwell on anything. When it's over, it's over. Oh well, that happened, didn't happen. Um, don't, um, don't obsess about it. If it didn't, if it didn't work, it didn't work, and I didn't do that, so I didn't do it. So we'll just get on with life. No, there's no, no dwelling on anything and getting angry. And there's a lot of what ifs, I suppose, but not angry what ifs. Not, no blame. No blame. Never blames anyone. Doesn't blame anyone. 
It's so, you know, that was what I wanted. That's what I did. The best case scenario is to have a nice roof over your head, some good food, stay healthy, and journey on. Just journey on.